Samsung is really going all in with Exynos again, and it looks like they're not joking around this time. The new Exynos 2600 is finally showing some serious power in Samsung's internal tests. But of course, there's a catch. The yields are still low, which means not everyone will get their hands on it just yet. So here's what's going on. According to reports from South Korea, Samsung has actually started mass producing the Exynos 2600 using its brand new two nanometer process. That's a huge deal. We're talking about one of the most advanced chip making technologies in the world right now. This chip is expected to power the Galaxy S26 series, which is the next big Samsung flagship coming next year. But here's where things get tricky. Samsung is reportedly producing around 15,000 wafers for this chip, which translates to roughly 30% of all the Galaxy S26 units planned for next year. So basically, only about a third of the phones might use this new Exynos chip, and the rest will likely still use Qualcomm Snapdragon. And get this, the top-tier Galaxy S26 Ultra might not even use the Exynos 2600 at all. Analysts are saying it's still too early to put Exynos inside Samsung's most premium model, so the Exynos 2600 might end up mainly in Korean models, while the rest of the world, especially the US and Europe, will still get Snapdragon chips. Now, let's talk about why this matters. Samsung has been trying to bring back the Exynos name for years. After getting roasted for weaker performance and efficiency issues compared to Snapdragon chips, they really need a win here. And from what's being reported, the performance is solid, but the real issue right now is the yield. If you're not familiar with that word, yield basically means how many working chips you can get from each batch during manufacturing. So if the yield is low, it means you're wasting a lot of chips that don't meet the standards. That's expensive, that's slow, and it's a nightmare for production. Right now, Samsung's overall 2 nanometer yield is said to be around 30%, which isn't great. But the good news is that the yield for the Exynos 2600 itself, the actual application processor, or AP, has improved a lot. Thanks to its smaller die size, Samsung can make more chips per wafer, and that helps efficiency. Reportedly, the chip's own yield has reached around 50%, which is actually a big step forward. So yeah, the 2 nanometer process is working, but not perfectly yet. Still, for a chip this advanced, a 50% yield is a sign that Samsung is getting closer to competing with TSMC, the company that makes chips for Apple, Nvidia, and others. And Samsung isn't stopping with Exynos. They're also using this same 2 nanometer process for something even bigger, Tesla's AI chips. Yep, the same foundry that makes Exynos will also make Tesla's upcoming AI6 processor, which will power Tesla's next-generation AI and self-driving systems. According to the same report, Samsung is getting ready for trial production of Tesla's chips next year, and they're aiming to boost their 2 nanometer yields to around 50% by then. But to really make it profitable, they'll need at least 70 or more percent, because that's the level where manufacturing costs drop and production becomes stable. Here's the interesting part. Tesla actually picked both Samsung and TSMC to share production of their chips. So yeah, Samsung is literally competing head-to-head -head with TSMC for one of the biggest tech deals in the world. That's huge. And we're talking about a $16.5 billion contract here. Elon Musk even mentioned it himself during an earnings call, confirming that both companies will produce the AI5 chip, which comes before the AI6 chip. This means Samsung is fighting on two fronts, with Exynos in the smartphone world and with Tesla in the AI world, and both of these are powered by their new 2 nanometer process. Now, why is all this important? Because improving yields at 2 nanometer isn't just about Exynos or Tesla, it's about proving that Samsung's foundry business can compete with TSMC again. For the past few years, TSMC has been dominating chip production. Most big companies like Apple, Nvidia, and Qualcomm go straight to TSMC because they trust their stability and efficiency. But if Samsung can show that its 2 nanometer chips are reliable, powerful, and efficient, and they can make enough of them, it could completely change the market. It would mean Qualcomm might start trusting Samsung again for chip production. It could also attract new clients from the AI and automotive industries, and that's a massive deal for Samsung's long-term business. Think about it. If Samsung nails the 2 nanometer process, that means faster phones, cooler chips, better AI performance, and more power efficiency. 
your Galaxy phone could last longer, run faster, and stay cooler, all because of this one breakthrough in manufacturing. So yeah, the Exynos 2600 isn't just another chip. It's basically Samsung's comeback story. They want to show the world that they can not only make chips as good as Qualcomm or Apple, but maybe even better. Right now, it's all about the yields. If they can push that 30% to 70% and make mass production stable, then the Exynos 2600 and Samsung's 2 nanometer chips could be a huge turning point for the company. And who knows, maybe the Galaxy S27 or S28 will go fully Exynos worldwide, but for now, it looks like the Galaxy S26 lineup will be split again. Exynos 2600 in Korea, Snapdragon everywhere else, while Samsung works behind the scenes to perfect its 2 nanometer process. If this all goes well, Samsung could be back on top, not just in smartphones, but also in the global chip race against TSMC. And that's something we haven't seen in a long time. So yeah, the Exynos 2600 isn't just a new processor. It's Samsung's biggest test yet to prove they can really bring Exynos back from the dead and compete with the best in the world.